Great. Are we good, Tommy? No. Uh, one minute. Let me know. All right, cool. Okay, we're live. Great. It's so good to have uh, have everyone here today. Uh, my name is Roberto Platt, the Executive Director of Warehouse Workers for Justice. If you're out there on Facebook Live, if you're watching this, if you're with another organization, uh, do us a favor right now and give us a share. Share this out. We got to get the word out uh, about what's uh, going on today uh, with the workers uh, in the warehousing industry. Uh, and, and first of all, thanks to all the workers, media, and supporters who've joined us today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. Um, so it's been over a year and a half since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, a crisis that has claimed more American lives than the Second World War, a tragedy that has impacted all of us, but especially our always essential workers, including our warehouse workers here today. Let's take a moment to appreciate all of our essential worker, workers. Recognizing their hard work has always been important in getting the goods that we need and keeping food on our table. So first of all, let's give it up to all of the warehouse workers here. Let's respect, let's celebrate their tremendous efforts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't wait to hear from you shortly. But just as importantly, let's listen to their stories and insights of what changes need to happen in this hugely important warehousing and logistics industry. While there's concerns that the great resignation, labor shortages, and supply chain disruptions will lead to higher prices, less discounts, less variety, and even presents not getting to homes on time. While that may happen, we believe we should make this a moment on a reflect on why so many warehouse workers and workers in this economy no longer want to go to work. Workers are tired of high demand jobs that pay far too little with far too few benefits, and they are striking from the workforce because of these conditions. Let's call it what it is, it's a strike. Workers leaving industries like warehousing and mass is a clarion call that things need to be different. And if Amazon, Walmart, and the likes won't change on their own, we need a coalition of public officials, community members, and workers who will make them do it. We're all tired, but as, but as a movement, we need to rally around this opportunity and realize that our always essential workforce has unprecedented leverage to create change in the warehousing and logistics industry. We can do it, but we will need solidarity and we will need to stick together. Thank you. Um, so let's go ahead, let's uh, have all the warehouse workers uh, uh, here uh, introduce yourselves. I'm gonna, uh, I'll just call people out. Why don't we start with, uh, you look ready, uh, 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 Sandra, if you just wanna uh, state who you are, where you worked in the industry uh, and share a little bit about your story. Good morning, Roberto. Thank you for having me. My name is Sandra Sanchez and I used to work for flexible staffing I um, worked with people that would come in to apply for jobs, and I saw uh, people of all ages and from different backgrounds just being sent to positions and jobs that they were not trained for. And then they came back saying, I, I wasn't trained properly. I need another chance, and we're not given a second chance. Great, and let's go ahead to uh, Lawrence. You look ready. Let's uh, let's hear uh, where you're coming from. 
you are mute. Okay, you can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, my name is Lawrence Sales. Uh, I work for Atlas Temp Service, and I was stationed to Unify Donut Place. And we do have employees there that don't get trained properly. Um, it's more of um, just you on your own. And after your first day of work, you most likely won't come back. So we have a whole lot of that and people not trained properly coming there. And I haven't been trained properly. And, you know, I did the best I could, you know, and I turned out to be like one of the top workers, but it didn't suit me for the stay there because of the people who we work with and people don't take pride of their job. This is one place they don't take no pride. We have a whole lot of leads, but they don't train no one. So we really like basically on your own, you go to that plant. And eventually that's probably good enough they can get. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, why don't we uh, go to Jody do intro? Hi, everyone. Um, man, do I want to mirror everything Lawrence just said? Um, <laughs> he's correct. Um, my name is Jody Martin, and I'm actually a, a community organizer now, uh, so I get to do my dream job. Um, but I was, I did work for Amazon. Actually, I opened up MDW two in Joliet, so I was one of the first workers in Illinois. Um, but I'm really grateful that we, um, to Roberto and Jenny and everybody on the team that are giving us the platform to actually speak about our experiences and our thoughts about the warehousing industry today, yesterday, and hopefully tomorrow will be a much, much different picture. Thank you. And we'll kick it over to Abraham. Watch you Hello. Yourself. What's up guys, my name is Abraham. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so um, I work at MDWA, and uh, I feel like the, we could be paid a lot more, and that um, there is a bunch of safety violations. You know, people are too close to ETJs or the pits, or the pit drivers don't care about being so close to each other. And um, during, um, like right now, they're not really enforcing face masks. Like they say, oh, you, got, you have to bring a face mask, but I see too many people putting on their face mask below their nose. And I know that's not the end of the world, but it's still a pandemic, you know. We're not taking it seriously enough. Thank you for, for your introduction. And we'll, we'll come back to that story um, about what's going on at Amazon. Um, uh, Dina, do you wanna uh, introduce yourself? I see you here. Sure, I'm Dina Bluen. I work at ORD5. Um, and so, you know, that place has not there, been open very long. I actually have already caught COVID since being there and I was off for three weeks. Um, I'm back there now and um, I have a huge problem with the social distancing and just how large the place is in general and our availability for breaks. Those are my issues. Great. Thank you for the intro and introducing yourself. Uh, and we are sorry to hear that, uh, Dina, and we do want to uh, I'm give completely more well. I didn't really didn't get sick, so everything was fine on that. It was just the inconvenience and the fear because I do take care of my elderly father. So, you know, I was it, it was fear there, but he's vaccinated. So and we 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 understand the concerns. Uh Alfred, why don't you uh introduce yourself to the public? It's great to see you, Alfred. Hey Roberto. Hey everyone. Hi, my name is Alfred White. Uh I work with uh Express. Uh, staffing, and I also volunteer with WWJ. My last job with Express was at a uh, Weinstein Meese at a freezer that was only ten degrees, uh, uh, ten degrees at all times, and low pay. And I find that most of these agencies, hardly anyone ever gets hired on full time at any 
at all the people I know or all the agencies I work with, I don't know anybody that really gets hired on full time. And if they do it after being with agency for five, six years. Thank you. Thank you, Alfred. And, you know, Abraham just put in the uh, chat. I also forgot to mention that we are supposed to have a 30 minute break, but they can't. But it takes five minutes to walk to the break room and five minutes to walk back. Uh, because these warehouses are huge. They're millions of square feet. We've heard this over and over and over again. It takes too long even to get to your break. You know, so one of the big topics of the day is COVID-19. Uh, and we have several workers here who have worked through during the, the peak of the uh, pandemic and have really gone through a lot. And, you know, I think this is important for people to understand why people are hesitant to go to work these days. This is a big part of it. So um, anyone who wants to jump in here, uh, any of the workers, you know, what have been some of your experiences working in the warehousing industry during the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, I could say one thing um, where I work at, uh, I think the way it is, everybody go on break whenever they feel like it. So we don't have a special time of breaks, you know? So when we, we did have a small little lunch room. So everybody always gonna take off their mask. So some of them just go outside and eat. But one thing about, about that is that um, our work schedule, work schedule, because whatever time we start, and every time we get off, we don't get off. You know, they just put work on you and you just constantly work. So instead of they asking you if you can stay late or an hour late or whatever, they just push work on you. And a lot of people get upset about that because they don't be asked to stay late in order to work. So by the pandemic is so bad, you know, we have do have complaints about people wearing masks and not wearing masks, depending on the department where you're working at. Because either it's uncomfortable or certain ones have asthma, they can't do it. No, we understand wearing wearing masks for many hours in the day can be uh, very hard. Yeah. Alfred, um, oh, Tiffany, were you trying to say something? No, I'm sorry. I was talking to one of my kids. I was on phone. Okay. No, you're good. Uh, does anyone else want to chime in, Alfred? Yeah, uh, hey, uh, I've been working in warehouses for the last five years with temp agency. Well, a few years, like three or four years with the temp agency, and before that I was full time. And all of these places have been uh, warehouse, warehouses, and uh, I've experienced almost everything that these everyone else has said. It, they story I have experienced it, Roberta, you know that. Uh, I've been, in the warehouses where they four or five square, four or five million square feet, where there's five or 600 workers, four or five, well, let's say five or 600 workers, three or four hundred people on, uh, on uh, forklifts and, and three or 300 people walking, all in the same warehouses, and all on all three shifts throughout the seven days a week. Anyway, uh, Roberto, everyone, I think it's, I worked through the whole pandemic too, Roberto, before and after the pandemic. And after the pandemic, like now, it's like the safety measures for the COVID have extremely dropped, extremely dropped. And all the, no one is being trained through temp agencies and every, uh, or nothing. They putting us in, in front of machinery that we don't know how to operate or not train properly. Thank you, Thank you Alfred. And uh, you know, I know we have a few uh, former and current Amazon workers, um, Tanette, uh, Dina, Abraham, Tiffany. You know, what have been some of your experiences uh, with COVID in the warehouse uh, at Amazon? Well, this is me, Tiffany, talking. Um, Used to wear masks, but you can see a lot of it is like, you know, they wear them, but they under here, 
they hanging off or they're not there. Like a lot of people don't wear masks because they didn't got so hot because we have to walk from there to there. You know, with these masks on and it's too hot that we even have them on. So we have to take a break to take them off. You know what I'm saying? Because it's so hot. Walk from one side of the warehouse to all the way to the other side of the warehouse. We even sweated out these masks. So people don't even have them on properly and they're down here. But that first one, the pandemic was going on, we wore but now since it's been fading away a little bit and we don't hear about it too much, they barely even wear their masks. They don't wear them barely at all. And we're hearing that from a few workers here. Um, Abraham, go for it. Yeah, like I was saying uh, before, it's just a uh... People don't take their uh, wearing masks seriously. And there's people who I know that are not uh, vaccinated that uh, that, be, that are doing the same thing. And, you know, they're the ones uh, most uh, likely to pass it on. And, um, you know, I've seen people just like put it down to their chin the whole day. And I'm just like, you guys are not going to say anything about it? And then there's a there was a recent case, like uh, last week or something. And uh, at one point we were having like one or two cases a week. And I know some of the people that got sick. Great, thank you. And go ahead. Yeah, I'm just not taking it seriously enough. So you know, is that that a sentiment of everyone here that safety is still a huge issue in these warehouses? People are still getting COVID to this day. That is what we're hearing right now. Yeah, absolutely. Every day we get uh, practically every day. Maybe not every single day, but at least three to five times a week, we're getting alerts from Amazon telling us that there's another uh, COVID case um, in the area. When I got back to work after my three week. Um, time off, um, you know, they didn't even know that I had been infected and I come in contact with certain people. So they're not doing their due diligence when it comes to notifying the people that they know that you're coming in direct contact with. So that's one thing. So then they do have us trying to social distance by telling us that and like chastising us like children. But meanwhile, when it's time to get like your assignment for the day, you have to go together in this huge group of people. Like they don't pass them out. Um, when we wake up, uh, line up in the morning for the stretches or whatever announcements, that's way too much camaraderie. They should do it in smaller groups and, you know, at staggered times. We all still start at the same time, which is 7 a.m. Um, we all still break at the same time. They brag about having 21 break rooms in the building, but the building does not open up completely yet. And then when you do get to the break room, let's say it's four seats or let's say it's eight six seats or six seats. You're trying to accommodate how many people and we're not even fully populated yet. So it worries you. And then you, you're walking 12 minutes from, from my station to my car is 12 minutes. My break is only 30 minutes. So I don't even have the prerogative to stay away from these people and just go to my car. Thank you. That's that's such a powerful um, and important story. Uh, Tanat, do you, do you have anything, any thoughts on this topic? You're on mute. Sorry, you're on mute, uh, Tanat. There you go. Yeah, she's right about that though. I never even had to stay in the break. I could never even stay in the break. I always had to um, go to my car because it's too many people. The, the capacity in my in my uh, Amazon, we was fully up and operating. We had all our staff. So when we get a break, it's two breaks. It's two sets of breaks. And at least at least a good 50 people on each break. At least a good 50 people. And the break room only sitting at least a good 10. So I don't know how we are staying six feet apart. I still don't understand how they thought we was gonna stay six feet apart working with them. I, it's it's never it's never 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 available. And then the people that say they had the shot, they got their masks off. But at the same token, I don't. I don't have the shot. I still want my mask on. 
I want you to have your mask on when you're around me. I don't, I don't, I never understood that. So she's correct about that. I, I, I'm very 20 minutes, 15 minutes to walk to your car. Then you only get 30 minute break. You got to walk, walk back and that's 15 minutes. So you really don't even have time to even be away from nobody. You always around someone. Everybody's walking out at the same time. It's just always, it's, it's, it's not safe working in the warehouses at Amazon, period. It's not safe. No matter what, hey. what, what precautions they try to take. It's not, it's not working. And we're hearing that, you know, we have workers here from several Amazon warehouses who are saying this. And we know Jeff Bezos made it to space. Um, it was a big deal. But we need safe warehouses. We need the richest corporation, the industry setter of standards to really step up and do more for these workers. We're hearing it time after time after time again. Uh, we still need more. Thank you so much for sharing uh, the story. And I'm going to start to transition to the next question. But, you know, our are these safety concerns that people are talking about keeping people away from the warehouses right now? Are people quitting their jobs over this? Is that an issue? And Abraham, you, you got something to say? I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, are, are the safety concerns keeping people away from the warehouses? Are people leaving the industry because of this, do you think? I just think that uh, people are leaving once they find uh, something that pays them better because we all know that Amazon can pay way more than what they're paying right now, especially with the pandemic. I, I realize that I'm not a current worker, but I feel like nothing has changed. I know COVID has made it worse. Um, and I know everybody can attest to this. You know, we're working 10 hours a day, at least at the time when I got hired, it was only $13 an hour. You know, you're breathing in dust um, and I have asthma and it made my asthma actually worse. You know, your hands start cramping, your feet are in pain, you're stressing out about, you know, you're stressing out about making these ridiculous goals or high rates, whatever the boss throws at you. You know, and I don't know what it's like now, but I know paid time off, at least at my time, that was limited. Benefits were extremely expensive. You know, even at that time, they were trying to replace us with robots. I just, I feel like in the training, like everyone's been talking about, it was very minimal even back then. Um, I mean, I was injured on the job, but I was, I was one of the lucky ones. I just had a sprained wrist, but I, you know, they, and I don't know if it's the same way again, but they still expected the same work out of me, even without full mobility in my wrist. Um, and I wasn't allowed to go on light duty because my injury wasn't as they, whatever, what did they say? Severe enough, which I thought was ridiculous. Um, but, you know, I, like I said, I was one of the lucky ones though. I had a friend who was actually driving a forklift and was rear-ended by another forklift. Um, her, you know, her back was injured, she got whiplash. And I mean, would you believe it? <laughs> it actually took, so they, they fought her tooth and nail to get any of her uh, workman's comp claim. I mean, they just, they just fought her hand over fist for that. And it literally took her two years to see any sort of compensation. The HR department, at, at least in NBW too, because that's the one that I worked at, was just terrible. You know, they, um, they were not there for us. They didn't listen, um, and I don't feel like they ever took any of the concerns seriously. Uh, I don't know if that's the same experience with all of you guys, but it, it seems like the experience was the same pre-COVID as it is now. In fact, it's worse because of the COVID. Um, but what that really showed me is I feel like Amazon exploits everybody who works for them. Some of these people can't afford to retire. Some of these people just need this job because they have no other options. Uh, I just, yeah, I, I am 100% with everybody else. I feel like things drastically need to change. And uh, Dina, were you trying to jump in there? Well, I mean, just with um, having the sickness and being out for three weeks um, and th thanking God that it's not my only stream of income, I said, if I got COVID again, I wasn't going back, you know? Um, 
you can do the thing with the COVID pay or whatever, but when it comes to my actual health and to be playing with this game with these people that obviously can do things ahead of time to make sure that we don't get in these situations, you keep putting me in a situation. And if I keep going back, then I'm the one that's not that smart. So yeah, that, that was pretty much it. Sometimes we just have to, you know, draw a line in the sand. I feel like Great. it also stinks. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. No, I, I no, just wanted to say, yeah, no, I, I'm so sorry. No, I, I'm just fired up and just excited to be with this amazing group of people. Um, I think one of my biggest things too is, you know, the insurance. I, my biggest, my biggest pet peeve is why is insurance attached to your job in the first place? And that's another reason why I remember, you know, a lot of folks would stay and stick around with these terrible, horrible conditions because this was their source of insurance is the state would neither give it to them or they just, you know, they had no other outlet. And so that is something that I would love to see changed. It should be, insurance should be a right and not a privilege. And that, that's right. You know, we, we ran a report, um, the COVID jungle uh, last January and 49% of the people we surveyed had no health insurance at all uh, in the, this industry. So we know that lack of benefits is a huge issue um, in the warehousing industry. Uh, and we're talking about, you know, a who's who of Fortune 500 companies that have major warehouses in the Chicagoland area. And let's transition, you know, we talked a lot about COVID. Uh, we're gonna keep talking about it and then transition kind of into what's going on with the current state of um, the, the supply shortages, uh, uh, and the, the labor shortages. Um, but, you know, for, for all the warehouse workers who worked uh, during the course of the um, pandemic, you know, what, what do you want the public to know about what warehouse workers, um, you know, need? What, what have been some of your experiences? Maybe we could uh, pass it off to uh, Sandra or Lawrence. We haven't heard from you. Uh, in a bit, but what, you know, what are some of the things that uh, you want the public to know about what's going on with this warehousing industry? Um, I, I, my, my experience is that um, the training, training these people correctly so that they feel confident in the job that they're doing, that they're assigned, and the benefits. Um, I even have uh, experience with someone who told me, oh, you know, uh, they told us right off that if I got pregnant, I wouldn't get any maternity leave. So you have your baby and then you're out of a job? That wasn't right. So yeah, benefit and training. I will agree with her. Um, like my job is, is we have wages problem there. Like when I worked there, I think they started me off like 14 and the regular work, I was a temp, but the regular work, they would just make $11, $12. But when wages went up, I went up to 16, but it was still at 11 and $12. So I had a choice either I want to get work permanent with them or I stay as a temp. And I choose to stay as a temp because that would be like a $4 drop from from what I was getting. So it was like, man, I need insurance, but I'm taking a big drop from $4. So I'm like, well, I just try to get insurance in another way, you know, cause losing $4 is like losing a lot of money. <laughs> so I couldn't take that move down on top of that. The workers that we have there as permanent, you know, they, they did have problems getting their wages while we temp making $16 an hour. And that was a big blow to the regular workers that worked there. And then we had people just start off quitting because they won't pay what the city was paying because the city only paid what the wage is supposed to be. But these small towns, they don't have to match the city. They just pay what they pay. And that's how it is in these small towns. They don't go along with the city wages. And, and so I just want to, you know, clarify that with you, Lauren. So you're saying that the temp agency didn't offer health insurance. So you have to choose between insurance and wages. And that, and, and that happened during the, the pandemic, during COVID? Correct. Yes. And wow. see, sometimes, like with me, uh, like me, I, I pay child support. 
And like mm-hmm. sometimes I can take the insurance, sometimes I can't because it depends on how much they take out or how far I'm behind. So if I'm kind of a little behind, I won't take the insurance because that's just taking them too much out of my pocket and then I can't afford to get the insurance until I get caught up. You know, I go through situations like that too, you know, without having insurance. That, and, you know, so we're hearing about a lack of benefits. And, you know, I hear a few people got sick with COVID. You know, did you get time off? Uh, was that an issue for uh, anyone here? Uh, is, you know, do you have access to sick time and vacation days uh, as part of this workforce during the pandemic? You know, I never thought about that, you know, because I never talk, I never caught COVID. I just make sure I prepare myself to be protected. And, you know, I never thought about it. You know, I just always assumed that take care of my health and eat right and eat vitamins, you know, keep taking vitamins to keep my immune system, you know, to a certain level. So eventually I didn't really experience any sickness, you know, during this pandemic time, because I'm always taking vitamins, you know, some that I get from the store, just to keep it in my immune system to block whatever out there, you know. So I'm like, okay with, as long as I stay on my vitamins, I'm okay. <laughs> I hear you, brother. Um, Adina, did you want to say a few words on this? I saw you uh, come on camera. Sure, sure. Um, I had no problem at all. They actually have something specifically called COVID pay. And I received that. And that's for being out for 10 days. It's only 60% of what your actual income normally would be. Um, but it was better than nothing. And it helped get me through. Then at that point, I took off some additional uh, paid time off because I just wasn't comfortable coming back uh, there. I felt like I was still contagious. I was still getting headaches. I still had really runny nose. I didn't have my smell back yet. That's actually how I knew I was sick in the first place. I was at work and a package of coffee had come open. And when I couldn't smell it, I freaked out because I have a really good sense of smell. So um, I can say that they have compensated me and I I will be getting some additional pay for the uh, paid time off. Um, But again, it's just going to be 60% and they didn't cover the whole time that I was out. They, they still limited it, but I got it for the most part. Great. And we're, we're, we're glad to hear that. So, and this is something that all workers deserve who uh, get COVID uh, working in these warehouses. So, um, you know, so any, you know, any last thoughts or anything people want to share about experiences? What does, what the public should know about your experiences during COVID? And then any last thoughts on, you know, benefits in the industry? We're hearing some, you know, some people are getting benefits, some people aren't. Uh, it sounds like it's a little all over the place. Um, uh, go for it, uh, Sandra. Roberto, I just want to say that I didn't see any benefits in the application packet that I would give to these people as far as sick days or sick leave. Um, basically, it was just like, uh, here's an, an insurance that you can purchase. It's going to be taken out of your first paycheck. Sign here. Which one do you want? Or deny it. You don't want it. Reject it. Sign it. And, you know, the companies just say, hey, tell, you know, I, I offered it to them. They didn't want it. But how can they, if they need the money and for food and not for insurance right away? So yeah, there is no benefits for these workers. True. Great. Any any final thoughts on uh, either of these two subjects? Yeah. Go for it, Abraham. I was gonna say that uh, that um. The part-time workers or the seasonal workers at Amazon, um, they don't really get benefits at all. Like uh, you have to be working for something like 60 or 90 days, uh, like a probation period before you get any sort of benefits. And then the benefits are like just almost nothing. Remember, um, one of my coworkers only only got like ten hours of PTO as his benefit, and that was it because he was a seasonal worker. And uh, they only give you uh, forty hours of PTO during the entire year, and they give, they only give it to you slowly. And then uh, they don't they 
they'd give you a uh, UPT, but what's the point of UPT? Because um, you can't get paid for it. So if you leave, uh, you know, it's counter, it's just counterproductive and, and it just should be eliminated and all that balance should just go to PTO. I'd have to agree with him. It was just as crappy back when I was there. They would, there were always some sort of time clock snafus. I mean, that's how I lost my job. I was very careful about watching the PTO, watching the UPT, et cetera. And I was volunteer organizing at the time too. So I would save time for that, save some time. I, I was a single mom going through all this too. So, you know, there's that aspect of it that I needed time off for my child as well. Um, but in terms of this, uh, they had claimed that I didn't have enough when I, when I had, and then I wasn't able to go back into the system and double check my information or I, there, there was no way for me to prove my innocence as it were. They made it more and more difficult. And this is, this was my experience. And I'm, I'm sure I, I guarantee 100% that I wasn't the only person to have that issue as well. They also messed up the schedules. Uh last week and the week before of, of uh, almost everyone. I was lucky to not uh, be one of those people, but I don't understand how someone can mess up everyone's schedule. And then uh, everyone has to go to the HR to get that fixed. It's just way too much time wasted. And I've seen where it's hard to get to HR or they don't pick up the phone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've uh, tried to call uh, the human resources phone number, but they make it like almost impossible to get to someone because of the way that uh, um, uh, the automated system is built. It's like, oh, if you don't really have COVID, you don't really need to speak to us. And it's just- I've seen, Yeah, I've seen where they get bounced around. Oh no, you have to go here. Oh no, you have to talk to so-and-so. Oh no, for that, you have to go to so-and-so. And and I mean, by that time you get frustrated, the worker gets frustrated and, and, and you know, makes, makes them feel like, okay, just give up. It's like they wanna wear you out. Yep. It just amazes me, nothing changed. I mean, it's been a decade at least, I swear, nothing has changed. Great, and thank, thank you, Jody. Thank you, Abraham, for sharing. Um, you know, let's let's start to transition and to, you know, let's 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 you know really talk about what we would like to see change. Uh, I know people are saying that um, there, you know, there isn't a change, but what would you like to see different from warehousing, and what role? Uh, do companies like Amazon have to play in creating a better industry? So once again, what would you like to see different from warehousing and what role do companies like Amazon have to play in creating a better industry? Go for it, Jody. Sorry, I didn't want to manipulate it, but I was just, when I was talking with Shania last night, it's just, and I didn't think about this when I was there so many years ago, but um, why don't they provide industrial strength masks? But there are also masks that uh, I know people use to exercise. I see runners, what have you. I cannot recall the name offhand, but there are ones that actually allow you to breathe better and you aren't sweating or whatever. So there are these tools out there that I feel personally, this company can afford. <laughs> if, if, if you know who can go up into space, Ugh, anyway, <laughs> that's all other subject. If he can go into space, he can provide masks for people. Even back in the day, that would have helped someone like me with asthma tremendously because there's so much dust, no matter how much you clean. That I think is number one. I think longer break times, without a doubt, and everybody's really served that point very well. It would take forever to walk to the main break room to get lunch, or what if you had to buy your lunch or whatever. There are all these different aspects. You're just rushing, rushing, rushing. What if you have to call your kid? What if you have to call your parent you're taking care of? You got to go all the way up to the damn front, sorry, the front to make a phone call. You have to ask permission. You are treated like a child. There are bells and whistles to tell you when, where, and how to go. You feel like Pavlov's dogs. Things like that need to be completely rectified. Uh, I do apologize. Oh, and regular maintenance. It was another gripe of mine on the equipment. Uh, I recall there was a loose pedal on one of the forklifts once and the forklift was unable to stop in time. 
there was a lot of things that I saw wrong. I'm sorry, I, I do apologize for manipulating or taking up time rather. And uh, Alfred, uh, Tiffany, we haven't heard from you in a while. Do you wanna, do you have anything to add? What, what would you change if you could? And what, what, what role do these companies have in making things better? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? This is Tiffany. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, equal balance in work and life. Able to still take care of our family and come up with more money. I think that they should uh, have us for sure money. They can pay us good. We work too much for the little money that we pay that we get paid. <clears throat> More money. Alfred, go for it. <laughs> uh, hi. Uh, if, I, if I could change anything, Roberto, it would be that I would have companies hire more temp workers that they have. Because it's like a lot of companies have all these temp workers and they won't hire them. And, and we showing up, we showing up faithfully day after day, week after week, month after month putting in the 90 hours or however many hours we need to, to require that it requires to be hired on full time and hardly anybody, nobody gets hired. That was one of the things I would like to see change. And, and anyone else want to chime in? Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, have better management. Um, Someone that could be dedicated to their job, who can um, change the policy of to you know for zero tolerance and and care about their employee, you know, put them as first as their priority because that what makes the money comes in for the company. So you have those things; things can work out much better. You know, a person that dedicated to their job, who very care about their employee. Had a lot of company. We we do have a lot of companies like that now. They don't too much care about their employee. I also do want to say that uh, uh, they complain about uh, um, delivery at uh, at these companies, but like for example, Amazon. Uh, they have a thing called Amazon Flex where you get to deliver packages. They don't even give you any benefit at all when you work for them. So they could at least do something because that kind of stuff, eventually they're not gonna have anybody to deliver them. They're just gonna have robots. And I don't think people are gonna be happy about it. Oh my God, you just hit the nail on the head, Abraham, because when I, right as I was about to be phased out, well, I call it phased out, they started to have the big armed robots. I don't know what they're called, you have to forgive me, but they started to implement them at end of line. And that kind of made me nervous because you had all these people who were just kind of thinking, well, is this gonna, this is what we do. Is this robot gonna take over our job? So the concern was there even years ago. That was a very yeah. good point. Yeah, um, they've been making robots for years and years ago because I used to work for a company called Vulcan Lead in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I make those parts um x-ray machines and stuff like that with the robot so i knew this is coming they're going to eliminate jobs so i knew this like 10 12 years ago when we were making these so i used to make you know parts like that so yes see jody's telling the truth about that yeah but the messed up part is also is that uh i've also seen a bunch of like a like a lot of people like uh are ignorant about it they think that People don't want to work and that, you know, we got robots to replace these lazy workers. And I just like, that's exactly why you lost your workers because of that True. mentality. Yep. And it's just sickening how many people agree with that. Yeah, there's a lot of jobs out there. Nobody don't want them. Yeah, hey, well, actually, I, I think it's I, I'm sorry. So I actually work with those um, machines, those big arms and everything else. Also, those ones that look like the um, dust bunnies, but they have the whole thing and they basically take it back to another area. The thing about that is 
we still have to think for the machine a lot yep. of the times like there's still so much human uh mindset needed in order for your day to go smooth you know they'll give you all like large packages and then they'll keep sending you small pods so if you don't know how to manipulate the machine to get it to do what you need it to do you're standing there for 40 minutes really not doing anything and wasting their time that was one thing and then sadly thursday i work and i don't get holiday pay that sucks that was it <laughs> <laughs> holiday that pay is crap man. dina i'm sorry oh <laughs> i'm sorry roberto <laughs> <laughs> no, so we're seeing here in holiday pay, you know, and uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to end um, with the, the last question and then we'll open it up for Q&A. If there are people out there watching on Facebook Live, put it, uh, put your question uh, in the chat, but I, I want people to really think positively, um, you know, what, what does a bright future of work for warehouse workers look like? What, if you could make changes what would make warehousing worthwhile uh to you if you had if you had your wish um so i'll uh we'll end on that question and then we'll go into uh q a and we i learned a lot today um this was great um but what what would make this work better being unionized and organized. Sorry, I've been dying to shout that out. <laughs> unionize. <laughs> I wanted to be the inside man so bad, and then I got canned. <laughs> I wanted to be the secret agent inside NBW2 so badly. Lawrence, were you going to say something? Oh, no, no. It's just, you know, I would look at it that, you know, give me a good team. And I'm okay. Give me a good team player of a work ethnic. I'm good. I'm good. Cause that was gets me going. That's a positive vibe for me. I get a good team. I got a good vibe. Tiffany. I say, um, uh... If we all can work together and we all can put our opinions in and get it all together and work together as one, it'd probably go. I mean, if some of the people that's hired in us understand what we're going through as the lower people and we all get it together, we probably could do it better instead of just thinking about their self. True, true. Uh, Sandra, Alfred, Abraham, Dina, anyone? I uh, just want to I'm sorry, go ahead. Thank you. Equal opportunity on benefits. Benefits, that's important, especially, I mean, for families, for moms. I had single dads who said, I need a job, but, you know, I need to work from nine to two. Um, accommodations. People want to work, but the companies want to their, on their time, this time, that time, and, you know, Single mom, single dads. My, my problem was a single mom. Same thing. I had to drop out the kids. I had no one to drop off my kids. You know, I have to uh, pick them up after school or right at five o'clock from after chat school challenge, things like that. So, I mean, accommodations for families, mom, single mom, single dads, uh, equal benefits like other big companies. Yeah, just more consideration on our break time, because like I said, um, the facility that I uh, just started or, you know, recently got with, um, I described it to my father as bigger than three or four football fields. So it's just, I, and then sometimes you think about it, it's like I'm only on floor two or three. So if you're all the way on five, how could you ever possibly even make it to the break room? And I understand that they're trying to put the break rooms everywhere, but now if it's only going to be able to uh, service for people at a time and we all take our breaks at the same time so it's just like are y'all even thinking about us at all and then also again you're right being able to reach out to our uh, family at the times that they may need us you know just be able to take a telephone call is huge I mean anybody over the age of 25 we got other real life things going on and it's just not fair that you know we're treated like children Uh, hi, uh, 
Roberto, everyone, I think uh, that we need articles and legislations change in order for, the, for, for, for some of these issues to be addressed. That's all I got. Abraham, Tanad, we haven't heard from you in a while. Anyone have any final thoughts? What would make this industry a better industry? Uh, like someone said in the chat, a, collabor a collaborative, um, mutual collaborative uh, uh, hold on. Something about collaborative uh, working. It was, oh, I was saying um, a mutual collaboration where the employees are actually heard. They actually listen to us. You, um, they take our input. You know, we're seen, we're heard. I feel like between that and getting paid, you know, a living wage, so you don't have to work more than 40 hours a week, <laughs> which is ridiculous. I feel like that would enhance someone's mental and, and internal spirit. I feel like you would feel respected. I feel like the mental health aspect of all of this crap is never addressed. Um, once again, a lovely conversation with uh, one of my colleagues here. This is what we were thinking about. You know, you're in a place that has no windows. In Europe, their warehouses have windows. Why don't you have windows so you can see a beautiful snowstorm or sunshine and wish you were swimming? Something, I don't know, something to get you through the day. It's those tiny little touches that I think would make all the difference in the world. You do feel that you're in the prison in that uh, warehouse because there's no, no windows at all. And like the little windows are like, you know, you can't really see outside and it's just, and then like, uh, I don't think so much of that artificial lighting is good for you. Every time I've, I've been outside and came back inside, it just feels like uh, all that light must be hurting psychologically or whatever. I'm not sure if it was unified or if it was a uh, skinny pop popcorn, but uh, the workers would come back saying, I only get 20 minutes break and I can't even go outside to get a breath of fresh air. Great. And uh, Tanette, do you want, did you want to say a few words? You're on mute. Yeah, I feel like if they did better, better things to make it more safer for us and better pay, because that pay is not making the ends meet, I think it would be much, much more better a work environment. The yeah, insurance was never a problem for me. So I, I can't speak upon that, but as far as like just the safety of my health and the health of my grandkids when I'm around them, other than that, that's all I feel like they need to do. Now about to say that I'd be telling people uh, that Costco pays them, pays their workers like an average pay of about $24 an hour and their health insurance uh dental and vision are free and i'm like so you saying me we can't do that at amazon no y'all should be asking for that like i understand you got little things like uh, music and water and whatever but uh you guys should should you know be demanding higher wages and better benefits and it's like i be telling people and they just i don't know just Cut up in their own little thing. Thank you. Thank you, Abraham. And I think we're all in agreement here. Higher wages, more benefits, flexibility. You know, we heard it. Safety is a huge one that I, I heard. Um, we're, there's a few members of the press here. Are there any questions for any of the panelists? Are there any questions uh, coming in through Facebook? Uh, as we're at the top of the hour. Thank you, everyone who stuck around. This has been great. Um, oh, and also, uh, we're getting paid a double overtime right now until the beginning of January. And 
I know other warehouses been having it for longer periods of time and like a, like a $2 uh, extra an hour. And they, they only did that at the very beginning of the pandemic. And then they just started doing double overtime again over here. And I'm like, uh, doing all that, they had record breaking profits. And I'm just like, so that, you know, they, they could be doing all this and they're not doing it and, and it's not gonna affect them at all. So we have a question here. What can communities where these warehouses are located do to support workers? What can our local communities do to support everyone who's here today? Someone like to answer. They could implement a higher wage standard because we all know that most companies can pay at least uh, even small companies. I, my coworker, like I, like I said before, somebody uh, has a wife that is in a small business with about 25 employees and she's getting paid $17 an hour and she's getting better benefits. So I feel like the city should raise their wages to like 20 bucks an hour minimum and implement paid sick leave for everybody. Higher wages, higher minimum wage, more sick time. I'm with it. Um, and anyone else want to answer that question? And there, are there any other questions from anyone here uh, or from uh, uh, Facebook Live? Uh, someone just want to thank everyone uh, for being here and speaking out. So thank you, Jeremy. Great. Um, barring no more questions, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for their time. A huge uh, shout out to all the uh, essential, always essential warehouse workers here. Uh, um, we, we definitely uh, appreciate everyone uh, sharing their stories, uh, letting the public um, know what's going on uh, during COVID, during this labor shortage, during these supply chain disruptions. Let's take care of our people here. Let's stick together. Let's organize for some change. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, to all the workers sharing your stories today. That was very powerful. Oh, we got one more question. Um, Okay, it was mentioned that warehouses have the majority of their workers through temp agencies. What kind of protections can be provided on that end? And maybe that's a Alfred or a Lawrence uh, answer. And Sa Sandra, I know you uh, dealt with this too. So what, what protections can be done to uh, help the uh, temp workers in the warehousing industry? Uh, hi, Alfred here. Um, guaranteeing uh, temp workers full-time uh, uh, employment and health benefits because they they saying that they they offer they telling us that with these agencies but no one is implementing it. You know, I've I've worked at many of warehouses up to a year. No reason for me not to be even considered hired on full full time. So access to, to permanent jobs, um, Lawrence, uh, Sandra, do you have anything to add here? I just wanna um, bring up the unified collaboration. I think if we don't speak up or workers don't speak up, get together and write documents, document everything. Documentation is uh, everything and bring it to your company. Lawrence, I think you're on uh, mute. Uh, mute. I don't know why I can't. Okay. Um, with the temp service, I know it's 
you should have a, like a certain time to, to work as a temp to get high as permanent. But a lot of these companies won't hire you. They'll keep you as a temp for one. And two, um, the more time you put in and you want to get hired to be permanent, they won't hire you. Because I think it's more cheaper than paying temp instead of getting high as permanent. And that's why so many jobs, you know, they go through the temp agency to use people because I guess it's more money they save that way. And that's why it's hard to get a permanent job out here these days, depending if you get lucky. And most jobs you have to have um, good attendance, no tardy, no nothing. Cause some jobs like that, you can't not miss not one day, not be tardy, not one time in order to get hired permanent. But we do have a lot of jobs out there that won't hire you. They just keep you as a temp. They, they force you to quit and keep looking elsewhere. You know, I went through that throughout my life too, going through temp service. A lot of temp service, you won't be able to get hired permanent. So I Thank think that's you, one of the cause we need to take care of. And Janelle White from the, uh, uh, the director of the Temp Worker Union Alliance Project said, uh, training and education, continue training and education and pathways to real careers uh, with good pay and benefits. I think that sounds totally reasonable. Um, well, look, we're a little over time. Um, we just want to once again, send a huge shout out uh, to our always, 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 always essential workforce, our warehouse workers getting the job done. Nothing moves without these warehouse workers. We do appreciate you. We thank you for all your hard work. Uh, and um, we are going to keep working the changes industry. Uh, let's focus on the people who get us the goods we need. Let's take care of them. Let's make some fundamental changes at this industry. Uh, and whether that's Amazon, our temp agencies, uh, our you know, big warehouses like Mars were offered and uh, Mark used to work at, we need to change it all. Uh, we thank you. Follow us on Warehouse Workers for Justice at, at Facebook, we're on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, if you're a warehouse worker, reach out to us. Um, you know, we, we, need, we need this unified vision. Uh, we need a team. Uh, I feel a lot of power here today with all these powerful voices. Uh, so I think we're on our way to doing something special. Um, and and uh, thank you for joining us today. And we'll, we'll be in touch on uh, next steps. Okay.